Good morning, Panthers. It's Tuesday. Um, sometimes I wait so long, like, trying to think of something to say in my video that I, like, I wait until I have hardly any time left. I, it is now, like, a quarter after 11, so, like, I guess I better pick this up quickly, uh, else I'm going to run out of time. Um, so I, I didn't really think of anything to say either, which was sad. Um, I did think of something, though, um, sort of. I, uh, I, I've been reading the letters of Julia Child and Avis DeVoto, um, and I, I, like, I just started reading it, um, recently, so I'm not, I'm not very far in, I'm only about a year in, it's like, just like a tiny little piece of the book. Um, Julia Child, um, in 1952, was living in Paris with her husband, Paul, and, um, she wasn't famous yet at all. Um, she had just started, in fact, working on the cookbook, uh, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, with her two um, partners. Um, so it wasn't even really like in shape yet. They had kind of just started working on it. Um, and she happened to read an article in an American magazine um, about knives essentially, and, and about, um, and the, the author was writing about how, how much he didn't like stainless steel knives, basically, um, and how, how much they were garbage and everybody should buy carbon steel knives instead. Um, I have not actually read the article, but that's, that's the gist of it as far as I can gather. Um, um, and Julia Child also agreed with this um, this whole premise about stainless steel knives. Apparently the, the deal is, I, I, cause I looked this up. I wanted to know why everybody hated stainless steel knives. Apparently the deal is that, um, stainless steel knives, although they are like, um, easier to care for cause they don't rust and they don't patina. Um, and you know, they look nicer. They're sort of easier to deal with. Um, which is why like just regular, like home cooks all have stainless steel knives. Now, um, they don't hold an edge there they they become dull very very quickly apparently so um, carbon steel knives require more care um, but they hold an edge you know a really pristine edge for a long time so that was the issue apparently um, so anyway this this guy had written this article about these knives and how you know how he had mentioned apparently that he's having a hard time um, because he was in the states and Julia child and her husband were in Paris um, he, he mentioned that he's having a hard time finding like a nice carbon steel knife that he really liked. Um, and so she wrote him a letter just kind of on a whim, apparently, and sent him um, a paring knife, carbon steel paring knife. Um, and his wife, who happened to be doing most of his correspondence, um, his wife, Avis, is the one who wrote back because she did basically all of his like secretarial type work because this was 1952. Um, and so she wrote back and wrote this very like friendly letter thanking Julia for the knife and, and, um, you know, telling her what her husband thought about it. And, um, just sort of generally, it was a very kind of friendly chatty letter. And so Julia wrote her back and then Avis wrote back to Julia and they became like, best friends and they kept up this personal correspondence and then um avis very quickly uh discovered that julia was writing this cookbook and um so she got involved in uh trying to set her up with a publisher and it so it, it's just sort of snowballed into this thing and they they ended up having this like incredibly massive correspondence um i saw something that said i think something like 120 letters just in the first two years, which is like a lot, um, especially when you consider how long it takes to get mail from one country to another, um, particularly in 1952, I would think. Um, so I, this is all kind of a roundabout way of, of saying that um, I, I was thinking about what an arbitrary way it was that they met and became friends and stayed friends for like uh, the rest of their lives, I think. Um, and, and how like appropriate that was, um, for like, you know, this particular 
time when it's, you know, just after the collab anniversary and it's like year 10 and this whole, like, you know, we, we met in a very arbitrary sort of way. Um, not only like arbitrary in the, that we were all members of the same, like, community, you know, we were all members of North Ontario, but like, even the fact that we found each other in your pants was like an amazing thing. There's, in your pants was huge. Um, and there were like a billion collab threads. I, I went through so many of them when I was looking through trying to, you know, before I got to Phoebe's side, like I went through so, so many of them and like, I didn't even read all of them that were there. And so I feel like just the fact that we all happened to come across the same thread is like a one in a billion sort of thing happening. And uh, so, so I was thinking about it and thinking about Julia and Avis's friendship and how, how, um, you know, what a lucky shot it was for them that they, they managed to find each other and hit it off so well and, and stay in touch for so long, having this, you know, this very valuable friendship for both of them and, and how that kind of, it's kind of appropriate for this time period in the collab that I just happened to be reading this book, um, at this particular time because it was kind of a lucky shot for us too. It was also a very arbitrary, random thing. We just happened to find each other and stick around for some reason. Um, which I guess is all a very roundabout and pointless way of saying, you know, I, I love you guys a lot and I'm really glad that you're around. I'm glad that we arbitrarily found each other. I'm not very far along in the book. So I can't really tell you anything about the book itself, but, um, you know, I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting thing for this particular <laughs> moment in time. Um, and I, like I said, I didn't have anything else to talk about this week. So that's what we're getting, I guess. Um, I love you guys a lot and I'll see you next week. Don't forget to be awesome.